Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Madam Estrada. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I indeed welcome to the beginning of the end, I think we can say, uh, of this conference. Not of the world, but of the world. Um, which I believe has been very successfully uh, managed um, and has generated some very positive exchanges <laughs> between uh, scholars from Africa and also scholars and students uh, here in uh, Spain. So let me congratulate uh, IC Casa Africa, CCCB, uh, for hosting and convening this conference, particularly, obviously, the president of IC, who has been very gracious uh, in welcoming us here, um, Director General of Casa Africa, also Ricardo Vasquez, and the Managing Deputy Director of CCCB, um, Rafael Vilasan Juan, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, let me also thank the team that has been very uh, helpful in uh, enabling us to travel uh, all the way to Barcelona. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Marta and Oscar, but also Sabine for our work here. Particularly uh, Marta, who has had to deal with a lot of uh, emails, not very strong emails, but a few emails from us uh, in terms of the logistics that were uh, necessary. Now, what Oscar has asked me to do, and Oscar has actually been the one controlling the agenda from the beginning, so we can point fingers at him. But Oscar has asked me to just to introduce the uh, African Peace and Security Architecture, the uh, APSAM. Um, and of course, we know this is the home of uh, Rafael Nadal. So to use a tennis analogy, my job is to throw the tennis ball into the air. Um, and then it is the role of my colleagues here, of General Joanna and uh, Mr. Mbui Kabunda, to actually hit that ball, I believe. Um, so I will be basically providing a very descriptive introduction, not very critical, but maybe in the discussion we can have a more critical engagement uh, on the African uh, peace and security uh, architecture. So to proceed, um, the African peace and security architecture traces its history back to the Organization of African Unity, OAU, uh, which was established by a charter in 1963. Um, subsequently, the African Economic Community uh, was also uh, established by Charter and it is linked to the Organization of African Unity, so it's the OAU and African Economic uh, Community. Uh, and we have to fast forward uh, all those number of years to 1999 when a summit was convened uh, in Sirte, in Libya, to First of all, initially just review the charter of the Organization of African Unity. But this led to a process of actually rethinking the structures of the OEU, and it led to a debate that established the African Union, uh, essentially. Um, and the objectives at that time were to consider how to accelerate the implementation of African integration, and how to uh, bring the regional economic communities. We've already heard the discussions about ECOWAS, uh, SADAC uh, and IGAD, uh, how to bring those organizations to contribute towards continental uh, integration. So the uh, uh, African Union was officially uh, launched in Durban, in South Africa, in July 2002. But to take one step backwards, in order to understand the objectives of the African Union, we have to understand the objectives uh, of the OEU. And essentially, the OEU's focus was to promote unity, solidarity, coordination, cooperation, uh, policy harmonization, to respect the territorial integrity, sovereignty, uh, and independence of African states. Uh, at that time, the issue of colonialism had not been fully uh, addressed in 1963, so one of its key agendas was also to address the issue of colonialism, uh, promote internal cooperation, and all this was in keeping and in respecting the Charter of the United Nations uh, and obviously other provisions like the Universal Declaration of um, Human Rights. So when we fast forward to the African Union, we find very similar objectives um, animating and informing the establishment uh, of the African Union. Uh, specifically, Article 3 of the Constitutive Act of the AU. This is the act that has given the AU its legal authority states that in order for the African 
continent to achieve greater unity and solidarity between people, then the African Union needed to come into uh, existence. Similar principles, again, animating the AU, um, respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity, uh, independence of its member states, accelerating political, socio-economic integration on the continent became a key uh, agenda, but also to promote international cooperation, and again taking into account the relevant charter provisions of the United Nations uh, Charter. Um, key objectives of the AU, promoting peace, security, and stability on the continent became very self-evident, given the number of conflicts that were still prevalent and are still prevalent today. But obviously, after you've made peace, you need to promote and establish democratic uh, governance. So the objectives of the AU also include uh, this agenda of uh, promoting uh, democratic principles, institutions, popular participation, uh, and good governance. Let us focus now on the peace dimension of the African Union and the key document that has animated the establishment of what is now called the African Peace and Security Architecture is the protocol establishing the AU Peace and Security Council. And the protocol uh, states that the Peace and Security Council of the African Union is a standing decision-making organ for the prevention, management, and resolution of conflicts. And the PSC's role is to collectively promote security to have an early warning uh, arrangement and uh, facility for the timely and efficient response uh, to conflicts and crisis in Africa. And yesterday's panel in the morning, we heard the ECOWAS discussion. Uh, ECOWAS also has its own early warning, uh, if you will, framework, which is supposed to link with the early warning framework of the African uh, Union. Key functions of the Peace and Security Council, the PSC, to promote peace, security, stability, early warning and preventive diplomacy, the deployment of uh, officials to prevent situations from escalating, because we obviously know that prevention is better than cure. The amount of money we are spending in dealing with conflicts in Africa is really uh, you know, out of kilter compared to what can be spent in preventing those conflicts from uh, erupt uh, erupting. Peacemaking includes the use of good offices, mediation, conciliation, inquiry. There's also peace support operations and peace interventions. Now, all of these can be authorized by the Peace and Security Council, but also peace building and post-conflict reconstruction, humanitarian action, disaster management, and to a certain extent, other functions uh, as decided by the assembly uh, of the African Union, of heads of state of the African Union. So the PSC, to a certain extent, has a substantial degree of power um, and ability to move things on the continent. Um, and amongst these powers include authorizing and deploying uh, peace support missions, uh, recommending to the Assembly of Heads of State an intervention in a member state of the African Union, particularly in respect to uh, grave circumstances, war crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity. Now, one of the things that informed this provision was the obvious the tragedy that took place in Rwanda in 1994. And what African leaders decided to do was to have a capacity to intervene uh, without any authorization from any other source uh, when these sorts of crimes were taking place. So this, in fact, is a fail-safe mechanism to try and prevent future Rwandas uh, from happening. But clearly, we have situations in Darfur, uh, which we will discuss uh, later on, I'm sure, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, where clearly the theory is not, at the moment, uh, living up to the, 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 the practice, if you will. Um, additional powers of the PAC include the ability to institute sanctions whenever there is an unconstitutional change uh, of government. The coup d'etats were quite a common phenomenon in Africa. There have been a few recently, and the AU has taken steps to at least make a comment or a statement um, to send uh, officials to try and intervene uh, in, in those uh, situations. And so this is a provision that the Peace and Security Council has the ability uh, to, to, to address.